Lord, we thank and exalt your name. We honor you because you are the omnipotent and omniscient God. God will understand the mystery of darkness. Lord, secret thing belongs to you, but the thing that I reveal belongs to us. Lord, we exalt and honor you as we declare this conference open in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, we ask for your divine wisdom, your knowledge, understanding, that your will be made known unto your people. Father, Lord, we are indeed our children. Father, you told me that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off. Our expectation this morning will not be cut off in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, as many that are down, you will lift them up. As many that sat in darkness, I command great light to shine. As many that sit in the valley of the shadow of death, the light of God is rising upon you. Holy Spirit, hide us behind the cross. Reveal your word to your people. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, you are welcome to this wonderful morning. This is CGF National Conference. Our teaching today is Faith as a Currency. Faith as a Currency. Spending faith as a currency. Our text is taken from the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. So through this teaching, we're going to be telling you on how to spend the spiritual currency of faith. And allow God, who is the judge of all, to reveal himself to you. So this morning, I'm going to be teaching on faith, spending faith as a currency. How can we spend faith as a currency? In the life of Christian, we may have experienced several things in our course of work with God. But when we work with God, we expect that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And if we see God diligently, we expect to receive from Him. And not only to receive from Him, but also to hear from Him. And to understand His way. Because He promised us, as His children, through Abraham, that in blessing He will bless us. In multiply, He will multiply us. That before we ask, He will answer. And while the word is yet in our mouth, we will bring it to pass. Jesus go further and said, if we have faith as small as the mustard seed, we could say to this mountain, be thou removed and thrown into the sea, it shall be done for us. But how do we exercise such an enormous faith? How do we spend this kind of faith as a digital or spiritual currency? that can buy goods for us, provide for our household, and manifest the grace of God that lives in us. This conference is about removing load from the head of people, because God is not in the business of putting load in people's head, but God is in the business of removing them. That's why tonight, as I speak to you on behalf of God and His people, the load that the enemy is trying to put in your head will be removed. We have seen God does wonders. I have seen God wake people up, literally from the dead. I have seen God mix, stretching the legs of people, open the ears of the afflicted. I have seen God drive out demons, do wonderful things, but so many believers may have also seen it. But there's something that is unique about God that they still did not understand. We heard that Jesus fed the 5,000 by those few loaves of bread and few fishes. So many Christians wonder, how is this thing possible in today's world? Can we actually spend faith as currency to buy food, 
to buy clothes, to buy shoes, to buy ourselves homes, cars, and things that we need for the service of God. Does the Father actually send a son on an errand and not provide means of transportation? Does the Father send his son a message and not make ways for the son to be able to accomplish such vision? Who do send on an error and not empower to fulfill such an error? That is why God also introduced this currency to you. The currencies of faith. Like he said in Habakkuk 4, that the just shall live by faith. Because how shall we just live? By faith. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because if you come to God, you must first of all believe that God is God. And it's the word of them that diligently seek Him. But the question is, seeking God diligently. How do we seek God diligently? By first and foremost, accepting to be his charge in the first place. Because the Bible says that it is wrong to give the children's bread to dogs. The dogs are meant to only eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. That's why unbelievers think that sometimes they enjoy the blessings that comes from the presence of God. They enjoy some divine favor. And you think, oh, you said I'm an unbeliever. How come I am blessed? You are not blessed. You are taking crumbs from the table. Healings is the children's bread. Deliverance is their rights. Casting out devils is their rights. Healing all manner of disease is their food. Taking the serpent by their nails. And it not having effect on them is the right of a believer. And not just a proclaimed right, it's our inherent right. Oh, when you hear some Christian being told that their death rise up, their ears stand up as this, if this is an impossible thing. If God raised Jesus from the dead, can God raise? Others from the dead. If God cast out devils, can't He cast out devils today? If God cleans ten lepers, drives away lunatic spirits, are they impossible for today? If God sent Peter to the river to fetch a fish and take money from the mouth of the fish to pay the tax fund. Is it impossible for that God to make your demand today? This teaching is about what I have personally experienced in the field and have talked to many people. The only reason why I cannot show you video evidences of this teaching is not because they do not exist. It's because most of this event took place between the mission venue and the road. So most of them we had never recorded. And so take place in personal houses. In mission, we do not carry cameras to video people's house or to video people's public because we want to showcase it to the world. But rather, we believe in declaring the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. And that's why these teachings, if you pay attention, you are not only going to be able to spend spiritual currency, you will be able to teach others how to spend spiritual currency. Our text, like I said, is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 1, which says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you've not seen. But how can you convert this spiritual evidence into physical reality? Is what 
this teaching is about. First, you have to be a son. Because if you are not a son, you do not have rights. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, he said, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So most of the teachings today, they're going to be technicals. They're going to look foolish to ordinary man who is not in the spirit. But they are not technical teaching. Neither are they spiritual. But they are facts and evidence that can be proven even into this world. But they are spiritual evidence which can be transmuted into reality. So without faith, it will be impossible for any man, living or dead, to please God. But faith is a spiritual entity. And I am carnal. How can a flesh inherit a spirit of God? The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the spirit of God. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. So for you to be able to possess the spiritual attributes of faith, you have to be a spiritual being. Because if you live in the flesh, you shall think after the flesh. You shall lust after the flesh and you shall die after the flesh. But if you live in the spirit, the Bible says, as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. If you are not led by the Spirit of God, you are not His sons. And because you are none of His, this mystery is going to stand as a big mystery in your ear and as a revelation that cannot be unfolded. But for you to have access to it, you have to understand what Romans 8 14 says. But you are not in the flesh. Just as Jesus said to Nicodemus, and he says, the wind bloweth, yet ever it listens. So is he that is born of the Spirit. When Nicodemus asks him, how can a man be born again? Does I need to enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, no. No. He that is born of the flesh, even 100 times, is flesh. But he that is born of the Spirit, is Spirit. For you to be born of the Spirit means that you have to live a life free from sin, not by your power, by the head of Christ. You have to come to Him and be filled with His baptism and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Remember what He said to Peter. Peter, before the crucifixion, looked at Jesus, said, I'm ready to go with you to Jerusalem. I'm ready to be crucified with you on the cross. I'm really ready to die with you. <laughs> what did Jesus say to Peter? Before the crow crow three times, crow, you will deny me three times. And what happened? Peter indeed denied his Lord three times. Not because he was willing to do so, or because he did it because he did not love his master. He did it because of fear. Because where does torment come into the life of a Christian? Fear. Where does woe come into the life of a believer? Fear. What does sex back comes into the life of a believer? Fear. Fear can truncate your faith. Fear can make possible things impossible. Fear can dismantle your destiny at a flash before your eyes because of fear. And there is only one way to overcome fear. It's not by excitation fear or keep saying to yourself with some methodic 
exaggeration speech of saying fear not to yourself. No. It's to be born of the Spirit. Because this gift is not only for pastors. This gift is not only for Christians who has served the Lord for many years. This gift is for you. It's for your children. It's for your children's children. Because the Bible says that on the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see vision. What, why would they see vision? Because when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, he gives you a divine revelation of the glory of God. He opened your eyes to reality beyond fear. And he take you beyond the darkness that covered the world. And show you the light that shines in darkness. He teaches you to convert all your lemon into your lemon weight. And to bring goodness out of death things. To not see death, but to see life in death. Just we know the attribute of the thief. His job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord has come this morning to put life into those things that he has destroyed. And to put it even more in abundance. The Lord has the ability to put life into things where life has been taken out. To make your dragon rise again. And that is exactly what he's going to do this morning. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But you know one thing about the spirit? The spirit is alive. And that's why this morning you're going to shout to yourself, say, I am alive because I live in the spirit. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are baptized. And the fruit of God manifests in you. This message is for you. But if not, it is not too late. The Bible says, repent, O ye sinners, ye of double-minded. Return to the Lord, for he will abundantly pardon. There's still chance. Because the Bible says there is a hope for a tree. Even if you were once a believer, but you have lost part with God, you can still return. And this message can still be for you this morning. The Bible says, there is hope for a tree, even when it is cut down. You know why? It will burn again. There can still be opportunity for you to burn your spiritual life. And you can still have access to the realm of God's glory. Where currencies is spiritual and can be spent on the earthly market. Because by faith, you understand that this heaven and earth that you are seeing was made from things that do not appear. By faith, you know that this ground you and I walk upon on daily basis. We are created from things that does not appear. By faith you know that that problem that you see is impossible and insurmountable to your eyes. As surmountable by faith. But you cannot assess this except you are in charge. Because the children's food cannot be given to dogs. Are you a dog? Yes, the day you rejected Christ. And he is not your Lord and Master. You are not a church. We have two children on earth. We have the seed of God. Which are the seed of the woman. And then we have the seed of the serpents. Which are the seed of the evil one. The devils. And these two seeds have been in conflict from the beginning. The seed of the devils have rights to bruise our heels. And they are the thieves. They can come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we have the seed of the woman, which are the seed of God. They are the children that have rights in their inheritance. But you can still be a seed of God and not know your rights. And that's why the thief can still come. Because even if you have a house, the house have fences, have security cameras, have guides. And all your guards went to sleep at night. Security cameras are turned off. The thief will still come in. That's what happened to a believer who does not know his rights in Christ Jesus.
But if you know who you are and the authority of God abides in you, you will ask for whoever you will in his name and he shall be done for you. So, because the spirit of life, because of righteousness, why do we need his spirit? Because we need his spirit for divine empowerment to make us not look like Peter, who before a dancer denied his master even three times. But if we have the Spirit of God, they say, Peter, when Jesus said to him, Abide still in Jerusalem, don't leave. Stays within your comfort zone. Stay within the church. Don't go out yet into the mission field. Don't go and face the enemy face to face. You are not strong enough until thou be endured. Until there is an endowment, the believer cannot confront his fear. Until thou be in power, you cannot do the works. You are called. The anointing of God is upon you. The job has been given. Go and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But can you go? No. Why? Because you have not been empowered. Go and heal the sick. Go and cast out devils. Go and raise the dead. Go and set the bound free. That is your message. But don't go yet. How come God send us and at the same time he said don't go yet? Because you are not strong enough. The Bible says a child as long as it's a child is not different from a servant. Though he be the master of the house, he's kept on the tutors and governors until the time appointed of the matter. And when the time comes, the right of sonship will shine forth. But until you get to that level of your right as son, do not go out, please. Because the devil is not pushed over. You know the scriptures, he knows it better than you do. You study philosophy, he is the wisest philosopher in the world. He's older than most of your inventors. But you need the Spirit of God, who understands the mystery from the beginning, who sets the depth of the waters, and who brings faith to life and realities. The Lord, faith speaks the word. The spirit activates the faith. And you need the Holy Spirit. Because without the Spirit, you can't be the Son whom you claim to be. The Bible says they are not all children who are children. It doesn't matter. Abraham has two sons. One was born after the flesh, the other one was born after the spirit. It was not first that which was of the Spirit, but that which was of the flesh. So you are you. Lucifer and his agents has children. They are still first before you were born. So they have more knowledge of the world even before you exist. Now, how do you conquer their knowledge? Because when that which is spiritual appears, that which is of the flesh shall be done away with. And that is exactly why Jesus, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, if he's not living in you, that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live the life of the flesh. For if we live the life of the flesh, we will die. But if we, through the Spirit of God, destroy the deed of the body, 
we shall live. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage that to put us again under this power of fear. The moment you become a son, the spirit of bondage is removed. That's what the Bible says. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That means all spirit of fear, all spirit of darkness, all spirit of habits, all spirit of weakness, and carnalities are taken away. But you will receive a new spirit. The spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself, when he hears such statement, bears witness with our spirits that we are not just children, but we are here. And joint heir of God. Oh, my God. We are. In, we have inheritance from God. And what did God says our inheritance is? As, do you know what the Bible says about the children? It says, O oh, ye sons of the living God, ye are gods. But do you know more truth? You will die like men. Because you lack understanding. So spiritual understanding matters, even though if you are a son to possess your right. What right did man have before the fall? The Lord brought all the beasts to Adam. The Bible said the name he called them, that was the name from his thoughts. It doesn't matter. You can't stop the thief from stealing. You can't stop the thief from killing. You can't stop the thief from destroying or destruction. Some people today blame God for the activity of the thief. Oh, why did God allow that charge to die? Why did God allow that accident to happen? Why did God allow the enemy to take away my job? Why did God allow this? That's why you are there as sons of the living God. And the Bible says you sons of the living God, you are God. And I tell you the only reason why you will die like men is because you lack the knowledge of whom you are. Adam understand who we are. And the Bible says the name he gave to whatever beast. That is the name then fought. And that means that authority has not been taken from man. There was no place written in the scripture where God woke up after the fall and said that authority had removed it from man. No, man still has that authority. A man has the inherent authority of a God. And because you are the seed of God, you are the children of the Most High God, you can decree a thing and it will come to pass. And light will shine upon your ways. Oh, the devil allowed that child to have accidents. God raised you up as a son of a God to wake up the dead. Oh, the devil brought sickness and affliction to your home. God raised you up to put life into mere deaths and destruction exists and heal the sick. The devil bring poverty to your home. God raised you up to change the course of nature. What did Jephthah do? Jephthah was a man like you and I. He was poor because he was afflicted because of the name the mother gave him. The Lord mother gave him the name Sorrow. And every day of his life, the devil translated that name to sorrow. Sorrow follow him in the market. Sorrow follow him to farm. Sorrow follow him to business in the office. Sorrow follow him even to his marital vow. But he woke up one morning and said, God, I want you to take away the iniquity of my youth that he might not grieve me. And that's what God did. And he woke up. The day he woke up was the day he discovered reality. That if he continued like this, he would die a life of wretchedness and sorrow. Though he is a honorable man, the, the fact you are honorable, even above your bedroom, does not change the fact that the name of soul can be attached to you. The fact that you are a believer, you go to church every Sunday, does not change the fact that you can still be possessed if you are ignorant of who you are. 
But the truth is this. Knowing the rights of his son can take you out of bondage. And Jetha woke up. I believe Jetha was more honorable. He wasn't, he didn't start. He was honorable even from childbirth, but he never realized who he was. But the day he realized, he said, God, I want you to enlarge my cause. And I want you to bless me in this. What concord have Christ with Baal? What agreement has light with darkness? What, what confidence has sorrow with blessing? But this is a man whose name was sorrow. Change it from sorrow to blessing. And that means your sorrowful name can be changed to blessing. Your dark days can be converted to victory. Your unemployment can be converted to instant employment. Only if you are a son. Only if you are a son. How do you become a son? Simple. All that the Father gave to me will come to me. And he that cometh to me, I will know why cast us. Yes, the Lord Jesus himself. Come unto me, all ye that labors and are heavenly laden. I will give you rest. There is rest in God. There is rest for God, people. Come to him today. And you can be his sons. He says, as many that receive him, to them he gave power. If you receive him, you have powers to become son. But if you don't receive him, the power of sonship cannot be given. You must first of all receive him. You must first believe that he is God. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that is where your rights of sonship come from. And do you know what the Bible says? You have not received the spirit of bondage to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. You know when you adopt a child, it's legally your child. God has adopted you into the family of God. A child is not different from his father. Your father by faith created the heaven and earth. You by faith can repair it. Your father by faith create peoples and their destiny. You by faith can repair broken and destroy destiny and amend broken feet in the lives of people. Oh, I have seen God walk in mysterious ways. I have never asked anything of the Lord that the Lord has not done. And we are bad because I know I am His son. And because of that, I have the Spirit of God. Cry, Abba, Father, in me. And this spirit himself beareth witness with my spirit that I am not anybody else but a child and the son of a God. And because I am a child of a God, if I am a children, I am a head. And if I am a head of God, I am a joint head with Christ. No wonder Christ looked at me. He said, you see all these things that I do. Greater than all shall you do. Greater than this. You will do greater things. But how come I still yet does not see myself doing greater things than what Christ done? Because I have not, my understanding is limited. But if my understanding is full, that's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing knowledge and understanding of God's people. Hearing the testimonies of what God has done, of what God is about to do. And by that, your hearing is fruitful. That's why faith does not come by reading. Faith does not come by knowing. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And when you hear the word of God, your faith is enlightened. And when your faith is enlightened, <laughs> and that is exactly where God performs his wonder. We are joined here with Christ. If it be that we suffer with him, 
we may also be glorified in him. Remember what the Bible told us? We were buried with him in baptism. Nevertheless, we were crucified with him. And we were buried with him in baptism. Nevertheless, I live. The life that I now live is no longer my own. I live the life of the one that died for my sake and rose again on the third day. It's the light of his son that opened the doors for you to spend the currency of faith. You must be a son. And a son has rights. In Revelation 18 verse 19 says, For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the ways of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The condition for bringing upon Abraham all that the Lord has spoken in this world, the condition of you receiving the covenant of blessing is being able to command your generation after you to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon you everything he has spoken in past. All the blessings he promised in the Bible are not fake. They are not for some men of God. They are for as many as the Lord our God shall call. They are for your sons and daughters. They are for your children's children. These blessings are not hidden away, but they are available today. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 4, he said, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. That is what God has promised Abraham. But the condition of this blessing coming to pass is for his children to be children of God. To be a son and not an outcast. To be a children, not servants. The Bible says the servant cannot make you free because if the Son of God shall make you free, you will be free indeed. For freedom to be given, the person decreeing the freedom has to be a son. The Bible says a slave does not abide in the house for long. He cannot abide there forever because it's a slave. When he finishes his purpose, he will be sent out. Whoever commits sin is a slave or a servant to sin. Because if you are a slave, you have limited rights. In fact, you cannot make decision on behalf of your master. You cannot speak or stand with the seal of your master. But if you are a son, the rights are different. The rights of son, and I will make of thee a great nation, becomes your inheritance. And I will bless thee, become your reward. And make thy name great. The Bible said there was no fable among them. None. So there should be no fable in your generation. Poverty is not an inherent right for believers. No. The Lord says, I will make your name great. Making your name great, it is the right of a son of God. The Bible says, since I was born, now I have grown to become a man, but I have never seen where their actions was forsaken. All his seeds beg for bread. The Lord said, Blessed is the man that fears the Lord. Surely his food shall be given him, and his water is short. That means they that serve the Lord cannot go hungry, and they shall be no favor in their lives. And thou shalt be a blessing. 
So, if you are a blessing, what stops you from being blessed? Oh, God is punishing me. No, God does not punish his children. He only chastises his children. Because if you be without chastisement, you are not a son, but a bastard. And I will bless them that bless thee. So you don't need to go about begging people for blessing. The blessing of God is automatic in your life. And anybody that bless you will be blessed. And he that curse you, the Lord will curse him. Waraba sakayaba. The blessing of the Lord is inherent among his people. The Lord will bless them that bless thee and cause him that cause thee. And there shall be, indeed, shall every governor, president, senators, families of the earth, kings of the earth receive blessing. Your blessing is unlimited. You have a blank check as a believer. The question is, how are you going to use it? Are you going to allow it fall in the water? Or are you going to spend this spiritual currency? But you may have a check and that without withdrawing it. If you don't know, you have a check. The Lord has given you a blank check. Write whatsoever you will on it and you can spend it today. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haram. He was 75 years old. He left by faith, not knowing where he was going. What about you? Are you ready to live by faith in obedience to the word of God? Are you ready to leave that job? Are you ready to leave certainty for uncertainty? Are you ready to leave all behind just to say, Lord, I want to be a son? But the fruits in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, what does it say? But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So these are the inheritance of sons. The inheritance of sons. The one, the inheritance of sons was to possess the fruits. That is what claims you to be a son. Without the fruits, you are not a son. And the fruit, the Bible says, against this fruit, there is no law. You will not be under the laws of anything. But first, what are the fruits? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, love, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And that's why the Bible says, whoever is born of God cannot come in sin. Because the seed, this is a seed. All of them put together is one seed as far as God is concerned. You can't have one without the other. The fruit is complete in every soul. When you see a soul, you must identify these fruits. If these fruits are not identified, check his life is not a soul. These fruits is what inherently make you a son. And the Bible says, if you have these fruits in you, that means you are born of God. And because you are born of God, you cannot commit sin. Because this seed abides in you. And the Bible says, against such seed, there is no law at all. And that are, and they that are Christ have crucified this body of flesh with the affection and the lust in it. If you are Christ, if you are joined here with Christ, that means you are Christ. That means everything he does, you should do. Ambassador represents the authority of his country in works, in deed, and in action. And if you have not yet seen the glory of God in your life, you only know the letter time has come to examine yourself, to check if you are a son. And if you are a son, ask yourself, why is these things not alive in me? Why can't I spend 
faith as a currency. Why does fear still rule 50% of my life? If I am a son, how come that I still fear my enemies? How come I am still afraid of gossip? The right of the son is that the righteous is as bold as a lion, but the wicked flew it while no man could show it him. But if you see on the contrary, the fruit of the fresh manifested, that means your son is in doubt. Sons, God is coming for sons and he's looking for sons. He's not looking for those who are wayfarers. Who preach in the name of Christ, but they hold a form of godliness and they deny the power that is associated with it. These are not children. These are strangers to the covenant. They are alien to the covenant of Christ. And these people cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 3 verse 7 says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the same are the children of Abraham. You can be an Israelite and not be a child of Abraham because you don't have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Oh God. But why does children still lack this right to oppress as sons? They are sons, but they lack this inherent authority. This fruit of the Spirit manifest in them. It shows they are children. But yet they can still not spend the currency of faith. Why? Understanding. You need to understand your rights. Philippians 4 verse 12 to 14. I know both how to be abased as a son. And I know how to abound in, in abundance. In every year, in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry as a son, both to abound in many and to suffer need as a child. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Children understand it is not them that we heal the sick. It is not them that will cast out devil. It is Christ in me that is the hope of glory. It is Christ. I remember those days when I was new in faith. We we'll go to the hospital and say, let's pray for some sick people. We left the hospital without praying for the sick. Because when the devil, when we see sickness, the devil cast fear upon us. And said, look at the legs, look at the waist, hand on the stretcher. Look at that hand. What would your God do about this? You begin to look at yourself. Can I cure headache? Can I heal fever? Can I pray for stomach ache? And that becomes your question. You forget that it is not your prayer. It is not your miracle. It is not your church. It is not your offering. It is not your salvation. It is not your gift. It is not your labor. But His. Christ. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Your glory over sickness. Your glory over death. Your glory over affliction. Your glory over poverty. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Notwithstanding, you have well done that ye communicate with my affliction. Ask. Everyone that accepts, receives, some Christian have all authority and said they fail to ask. Those sickness will never be healed except you ask. Faith. Ask and act. That's how it works. If you pray for the sick and you don't take him by the hand, he will not be well. If you want to raise the dead, I remember when we were in about this year, during the conference, I was still ministering in a church. When one of our brothers came to me and said, the brother will send an error, just collapsed in his shops. 
I have to quickly round off the message and walk to the shop. Take the brother by the hands. I saw spectators watching him die. And they were looking at him on the ground. Oh, he was a good man. When he's dead, he will surely eat rice from his burial. We will celebrate with chicken. That was their thoughts. But when the Lord got there, <laughs> and I said to him, Brother, receive strength. Get up. And he literally followed my hand and he stood up upright. Spectator was wishing and waiting to see him fall back to the ground. But he never fell. And he followed me. I said, Let's go to the church. And the Lord strengthened him. And he received strength by the ocean of the Holy Spirit. Why did I tell you this? Is that if you know your right as a son, the devil cannot intimidate you. But you will be intimidated if you are a son, you don't understand your rights. So demons will not just go because you say in Jesus they might cast you out. No. They want to see if how much of understanding of the authority of a soul you have in that Jesus. I remember in Okba Kingdoms this year during the conference, a lady, a child came to the conference ground. After prayers and healings and everything, they left. And as he was going, she was going. He could no longer move his leg. He was virtually paralyzed in the leg. And then she told me, she came back with one leg standing to the church. And I laid my hands on that leg. And I saw the Spirit of God manifest its power. And the devil was driven out of that leg. Instant healing was performed. The reason is because I understand that being a son is being Christ. And being Christ means being strengthened of Christ. And until you are strengthened of Christ, or Christ in you is your hope of glory, all things are impossible. But all things are possible if you believe that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Galatians 4 verse 1 to 3 says, Now I say that he, as long as he still a baby, do you know what Paul says? We don't give strong bows to babies. We don't give strong bows to babies. You know why? It's in the queue. He only thinks about food, milk, from that mother. As children, we can only desire the sincere milk of the world so that we can grow to become adults. But among the mature, we impart wisdom. We do not impart wisdom among children, but we impart wisdom among the mature. But not the wisdom of this age, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The wisdom we impart is the wisdom of God in a mystery, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That is what wisdom we impart. We do not impart the wisdom of this age that comes to nothing. But we impart the wisdom of God in a mystery. In a mystery. Comparing spiritual thing with spiritual. A child does not differ from a servant as long as he still remains a child. That's why he wonders. You say all this authority abides in the life of a believer. How come we still see Christians in poverty? How come we still see Christians not living their full potentials? How come we still see Christians who cannot even pray for headache? The reason is because it's still a church. And it's not different from a servant. And as long as he's remaining a child, he is not different from a servant. Though he is the Lord of everything. 
Though he controlled that car that carried him as passenger, though he is the owner of that house where he is the tenant, though he is the owner of that factory where he is a worker, but he is still charged. He is put under tutors and governor. Though he is the Lord, but he is not different from a servant. He is put under tutors and governors. The reason why governor rule over you and you are a student is because you have not grown to adulthood. But are they necessary? Yes. They bring you to maturity. Until the time the father will appoint for you to rise from being a son to being a leader. And when you become an adult, the right of sonship will manifest. When you tell father, father, this man is sick, God will ask you, son, that man is sick, what do you do? And you are going to say, heal him. Then you, God will say, go ahead. That is when you have less. Being a nephew to being what? A son. When you are a son, you will look at that man and understand your rights as a son. Like the prodigal son say, Father, give me my inheritance. You will be able to say, Father, I need my inheritance. And Father will say, yes, you need your inheritance. Here is it. But if not, if you are still a child, you will be like the other son. Who say, Father, I have served you all my life. You have not even given me a smoking to celebrate with my friend. But the father said, everything I have was yours. And they have always been yours. You could have taken whatever you want at any time. But the day you did not grow to become a man, that means you will live and be tasty in the midst of the river. And you will be in abundance and be hungry. Because he does not know who you are. And that's why today, if you want to be able to spend the digital currency of faith, you should know who you are. You must have the right understanding. When we be a children, we be in bondage under the elements of the world. Mark 2 verse 18 to 20. And the disciple of Jones and the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and all the Pharisees always fast? But your disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride's chamber fast? While the bridegroom is still with them? As long as they have bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Why? Because they live in the presence of God. You don't fast in Mount Hamel. You don't fast where the Most High Spirit command His blessing. Because you are living in the realm of glory. But the time will come when you leave that place where it's all rosy. Where your childhood, as a child, milk is giving you what around to you. Even if the parent is hungry, they provide for your daily bread. But now, time has come to become a man. The bridegroom has left his chamber. And it can come when the bridegroom is taken away. Those of his household will fast. They shall fast in those days. But they will not be told to fast now. Because they are still in a pew. Spending faith. Ezekiel 18, verse 8 to 10. He that hath not given forth unto usury, neither has taken any increase that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity and has executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgment. To thee truly, he is just, and he shall surely live, says the Lord. You know why? It is only the just that shall live by faith. 
If you are not a just person, you cannot live by faith. It needs a just man to be able to live by faith. And that's why God is telling you that behold, in Habakkuk 2 4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not right in him, but the just shall live by faith. How do you live? How do you get employed? By faith. How do you provide for your family as a believer? Is it because you have fat accounts or because there is money in the bank? No, by faith. How do you run your church without people giving offering with travel every year for the past 20 years for mission? Without any donation, without any sponsor, by faith. We fled the vehicle. We paid transport for people to go back to their homes. How is this possible with nobody providing by faith? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If your soul is really elevated, I am rich. What does the man say? I have so many goods to last me for so many years. I have a large bank account. There are billions in the bank. And then because of that, I will never be poor. No, you will die in poverty. Because the Lord says the mind, your soul is demanded from you. Before you die, tell me, what becomes of all those words? What becomes of all the money you kept in the bank? You store the ways. The Bible says your goats are not eaten. And the rot and your catawomb shall crown to the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. But how does the just live? By faith. How does the just spend money? By faith. How does the just execute a project? By faith. How does the just build houses? By faith. How does the just buy a car by faith? Right? Aircraft by faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Romans 1.17 For there in, in the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Hebrew 10, verse 37 to 39. For yet a little while, and he that shall come shall come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. The just live by what? Faith. But if any man drives back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We are not of them that draw back. If you decide, oh God, this road is too tough. This way of going to the pulpit, not knowing what to preach, <coughs> waiting for the Holy Spirit to put message in your mouth. God, I am full of fear. You are not yet just. Children message and Abednego saw the finance heated seven times and the Lord and the Bukhazar says, Let me see the God that will save you from my hands. They were not pissing on the pants. They were not shaking. Their knees were not knocked together. They said, We are not in a haste to answer the old king. If they were mindful of a saving their life, they could have saved it at any time. But what did they say? We are not mindful to answer you in this matter. But let it be known unto you, O King, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us from your fury finals. But if he cannot save us, we will die. But let it be known unto you, O King, we will not worship your image. Faith is casting your way behind you. There is no second option with faith. It's not either this or that. Faith is only one direction. You focus. Your mind is made up. I have my mind made up. 
and I won't turn back. That is what faith is all about. And I love that song. I have my mind made up, and I won't turn back. It doesn't matter if the river is in my front, or the fire is at my back, or the lion is at my side, or Satan at my right hand. I won't turn back. Because my mind is made up. If your feet excel in glory, your mind is pretty made up. And when your mind is made up, impossibility becomes possible. Hidden things become reveals. The Bible says hidden things belong to God. But the things that are revealed, they belong to me. This morning, God is giving you an opportunity. To end that currency of faith. To be able to live by faith. To not look at the situation. To not look at things that surround you. But look at the greatness of your God. To see God in every situation. To look beyond the wilderness and see the well. To look beyond the rivers of death and see the rivers of life. God is expecting you. To go beyond things that are revealed and manifest the things that do not appear. God is waiting for you to just ask. He said, ask of me. Today, have you asked? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Because everyone that asks receives, he that seeketh findeth. Because we are none of them that draw back from the promises of God onto our own petition. If you draw back from this teaching, you will only be doing it at your peril. There is no one that put his hand on a prow and look back his feet for this blessing. His feet for the kingdom of God. But to them that believe unto the saving of the soul, your belief matters. We are talking about spending faith as a digital currency to purchase goods, to mine for progress, and to make impossibility possible, to heal our diseases, to build estate for God, to build mission, to sponsor the work of the ministry. But remember, the Bible says, ask in faith. Do not ask to consume it upon your lust. Because the Bible says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. Let those man not think he will receive anything of the Lord. But your mind should be fixed. Get your mind made up. Don't turn back. It doesn't matter what the devil throw at you. It doesn't matter. Don't look at the face of the thief. Don't spend all your years binding the devil. Don't spend your time casting out demons. Spend your time focusing on God. Because you can't stop the thief. Remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees when they accused him of healing somebody on the Sabbath day. He said, which of you will have his sheep and he fall into the well on the Sabbath day and will not take him out? Which of you will have a problem that is blessing? And we say, because it is not your time, I will not save it. Don't Oh, God has not revealed. If you must wait for God to reveal everything, you will die before your time. The Bible says, Thou shalt decree it in, and it shall come to pass, and light will shine upon your wedge. The reason why God deliberately did not reveal some certain things to you as a believer is for your eyes to be blinded to it, so that your faith can be activated. No man hope for the things he sees. If you hope for that which you do not see, with patience you wait for it. And you end it. Brethren, the hour has come to claim that currency as a faith. Oh, to be able to spend it. For you to be able to spend faith, you have to have it first. We have taught you how to have it. Because now you have it, how do you spend it? You spend it on only things that are reasonable. Things that glorify God. And it will always work. God honors his word more than his name. God does not turn back on his word. If you are listening to the sound of my voice, 
Time has come for you to step faith. Point your hand towards the screen and say, Lord, I claim that currency of faith. I claim that currency of faith and I'm ready to spend them for tomorrow. Father, I pray for your people. I release the digital currency of faith into their hands. From today, because they are sons, they will spend the currency of faith. Lord, they will spend it on their business. They will spend it on their purchase. They will spend it on their job. They will spend it in the service of the Lord. This I ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brethren, God bless you. This is CGF Annual Conference. Join us tomorrow by 9 to 11 a.m. God bless you as you participate. Today, this is where we end our today's teaching. And we ask that you join us again tomorrow. God bless you as you participate. Amen.